in terms of the spiral model, I, uh, I don't want to leave a misapprehension that it is in uh, an iterative model in the same way. It's, it's not iterations going back and forth between the major phases. The only real iteration is the iteration of the plan, do, check, act model at every stage. So I uh, just wanted to to make sure that that was uh, it. But uh, going on with, uh, well, I'm just sticking with the spiral model for a moment just to to repeat, you know, I, I push the, the waterfall model, but I, I do see the, the spiral model as a... Um, an improvement on it uh, using the spiral model as a basis but having the additional layer of the uh, the check at every stage and the uh, in insurance that you are well and assurance that you are uh, doing things properly by you know planning um, and uh, putting in the necessary work at each stage uh, to make sure that you are, in fact, doing it right. Uh, now, reuse um, is, of course, you know, reuse of code. So, um, hopefully, you are reusing code that you know is secure, that you know uh, works, functions, is not subject to attack, um, uh, code that is is tested. Um, unfortunately, of course, uh, an awful lot of people figure uh, the reuse model just means, you know, taking it easy by reusing everything you possibly can. Um, you, uh, you know, you don't want to reuse stuff that didn't work all that well in the first place. Uh, let's face it, you know, if you've got another chance to, to do it properly and, and it wasn't done properly uh, the first time around, let's, you know, take another opportunity to, to do it right this time. Uh, let's not just, you know, be lazy and, and reuse something that we already know does not work. So, uh, we're... No, reuse the right stuff. Uh, the clean room model. Um, the uh, of course, the, the idea comes from the the clean room in uh, chip manufacturing and in sometimes drug manufacturing. Um, we do not want contamination. Uh, we do not want. Uh, uh, errors in, in production that can be avoided by, uh, you know, avoiding uh, dirt and dust and lint and, and things like that in uh, the photolithography process and, and other factors in, involved in, uh, say, drug manufacturing, whatever. Um, the uh, idea, then, is to avoid problems, to to avoid uh, issues that you know are going to create problems. So uh, avoid the types of activities in development that you know create problems. The, the hurry, the lack of care, the lack of planning, iterative methods, uh, those, those sorts of things. Um, you know, and I, I lump an awful lot of, you know, rapid application development uh, and even, uh, in some cases, Agile. And I know, that, well, I'll, I'll talk about Agile a bit, a bit more. Um, so, anyways, you know, I avoid um, the, the methods that we know produce problems and ensure that in, uh, in doing your development, you do it properly, uh, you do it the right way, uh, you don't introduce problems. No, easier said than done, I suppose. Uh, Computer-aided software engineering, uh, and of course, you know, using computer tools to aid you in your, your software development. And I suppose my favorite uh, computer-aided software tool, the 
uh, very often was Notepad. I mean, you know, what do you, you know, they, they, yes, there are, there are tools, particularly the code checking tools uh, and that sort of thing. And, and you know, various, there, there are tools, uh, there are code reuse libraries, there are, you know, all kinds of things that, yes, we can use to aid our process. But once again, you know, use the ones that help you to produce secure code. Don't just use the ones that help you to produce code the fastest, uh, but aren't very careful in, in terms of what they're actually producing. So uh, we've got... Uh, We've got tools. Use the use the ones that promote proper development. Uh, once again, yeah, easier said than done sometimes. Um, Component-based de development, and uh, you know this is starting to get us closer uh, to the agile thing by by subdividing our large projects into uh, modules. Well, we've, we've already talked about that, you know. Uh, uh, modular uh, types of, of development. Um, subdividing uh, the, the project in, in logical terms. Uh, breaking down the uh, the larger project into specific functions that you know are going to be required and you know build those those components properly uh, instead of attacking uh, the system as as a huge mess uh, again you know this is this is like the breakdown tools that we talked about in uh, system architecture the the security frameworks that allow us to decompose a very large um, a uh, rather daunting problem into smaller pieces that we can start to address uh, on an individual basis. Uh, uh, structured programming development, again, you know, anything that, that will produce structure in it helps. And extreme programming, which is uh, bungee jumping with a laptop. Now, this is, you know, extreme programming is starting to get into the uh, the agile world. Um, now, I, I make fun of agile uh, mostly because people misuse it. The um, there are some great things about it. Uh, this decomposing uh, into smaller projects, you know, projects that can be adequately described on a three by five card. You know, so don't tackle too big a project. Make sure that you break it down. Um, that, you know, make it a small enough size that yes, you, you can go at it. You can solve the problem. Um, in addition, um, there's the pairs. You know, programmers working in pairs with one computer, with one keyboard. Uh, one person is on the keyboard at a time. This um, does a couple of things. Uh, one is that it forces communications. You've got to be telling your partner what you are doing. You've got to be explaining. And as you are explaining, of course, you are clarifying in your own mind what you are actually doing. So uh, that is uh, a good thing. And the... Uh, the other part of that is, of course, that somebody else is looking over your shoulder and checking on what you're doing. Those are the good parts of Agile. The hurry-up part is not something that we really want to promote.